What's going on, Tar Hill Nation? It is your favorite North Carolinian, Ross the Tar Hill. And in this huddle, man, we got to talk about the North Carolina Tar Hills 89 to 87 loss to the Alabama Crimson Tide in this Sweet 16 last night, bro. And, you know, I had to wait until this morning to get this thing done because I worked all day and we stayed up late last night. And I wanted to kind of mull it over in my head a little bit before I uh, gave my my final thoughts on this ball game. Obviously, everybody that watched it, man, um, you know, it ended up becoming a shootout, which is something that we've all talked about a hundred times. That if North Carolina is going to go deep into the tournament, they're going to have to play really good defense. And you know, in this in this game, you know. There was a lot of contested basketball shots. Um, it wasn't that North Carolina was necessarily out of position a whole bunch, but Alabama was hot, and they were stinking, knocking them down. And uh, we had talked about that magic number of 80, and Alabama scored 89, and that's when you get into a danger zone. North Carolina had one win where their defense gave up over 80 points, and that was that game against Tennessee when they dropped 100 so you knew that this was going to be a, uh, a dangerous position that we would be in if Alabama started scoring, and they did. They scored 46 in the first half, and they scored 43 in the second half. And the issue was, just like I alluded to, when we took that 54-46 to halftime lead in, we had a lot of points from Elliott. We had a lot of points from Seth. We were getting offense from places where we don't normally get them. And then Carolina ended up shooting 25% in the second half because my man RJ was just off. You know, and when RJ's off and you're not playing your best defense, dude, it is a recipe for disaster. And that's what that's what transpi transpired last night, if we're just going to be honest with each other. <clears throat> it's not that Alabama's a better team, but that's the thing about March. If you... If you have an off day, if you have a bad basketball game, anybody can put you out on any given stinking day. And, uh, you know, it was a rough time for RJ to uh, to not be able to shoot the ball very well. So um, Carolina goes down 89 to 87. And, uh, you know, interesting statistic off the jump was Nelson scored 24, dude. 24, 12 points, and the dude had five stinking blocks and if you didn't think that was enough mark sears their leading scorer he had 18 and he was their fourth leading scorer mark sears had 18 and he was their fourth leading scorer griffin had 19 and estrada had 19 as well alabama went 11 for 26 from three 42.3 percent they also went 32 for 67 from the field that's a 48% clip, dude. I mean, once again, Carolina's inability to stop them on the defensive end spelled the disaster that we saw. And then you couple that with R.J. Davis going 4 for 20. 4 for 20 in 38 minutes of play, and he was 0 for 9 from the three-point line. And there was, a, there was a moment probably about 10 minutes into the game we were all asking ourselves, should RJ continue to jack him up or, you know, does he kind of need to, you know, be a facilitator in this game? And uh, he ended up getting to the free throw line a couple of times. He he ended up with 16 points somehow. Obviously, he went eight for nine from the free throw line. But um, it got to the point where, you know, he wasn't even close on his shots. And a lot of them were forced three balls. And it was almost kind of shooting us out of the game. Um, because of the, the up and down, the seesaw effect that we had as we're trading punches with Alabama. So RJ, uh, unfortunately it's, you know, people have bad games, man. You really can't control when you have them. Sometimes you're just feeling it. And then sometimes you're just stinking off. And it's just, that's the thing about March, bro. That is the thing about March is any given stinking day. It can just not be your day. And it was not R.J. Davis's day yesterday. And he did everything that he could to try to get out of that slump 
But um, sometimes you're just not feeling it, man. Armando Baycott finished with 19 and 12. He had a pretty good game. Um, went eight for 18 from the field. I like his shot attempts, but missed a couple of bunnies again. One of them was that dunk off that really good Harrison Ingram pass that would have pushed Carolina's lead to, I think, five. And, um, you know, it ended up being like a four-point swing because I think Bama went to the line right after that and uh, cut into the lead. And Carolina was just making uh, – there's a lot of unforced, you know, not necessarily turnovers, but just like poor shot attempts, man. Um, it was a uh, – they were forced. That's the best way to, 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 to say it. And, and, and none more so, none more so than when Carolina's nursing a one-point lead. They were down by five. Hubert Davis calls a timeout with about 3.30 to play, and everybody's like, there's the season. There it goes. It's done. Next year, what have you. And then North Carolina comes back. They storm back. They take a three-point lead. Alabama goes and scores. I think the score was 86-85. to 85. And what about, I feel like there was like 15, 20 seconds on the clock. Jalen Washington, or excuse me, Jalen Withers is at the top, which the prelude to that is a very interesting floor personnel at the end of that basketball game with Wojcik getting a ton of minutes in the last four or five minutes of play. Jalen Withers getting a ton of minutes with the last four or five minutes of play. You know, sitting sitting Elliot Cadeau and Seth Tremble was a little perplexing to me. Um, especially in the latter stages of the game, Jalen Washington didn't get a ton of burn. Um, you know, it was just a little perplexing to me for Seth Trimble to only have 11 minutes of burn while Paxson Wojcik had 15 minutes of burn. I, I just, I don't know. That was a perplexing move um, from Coach Davis. But uh, Jalen Washington's got the ball at the top with like a minute 10, a minute 15, and uh, nobody's guarding him. And there's plenty of time on the shot clock, and this is a pivotal time in the game. And uh, for whatever reason, he decided nobody's got guarding me. I'm going to shoot this three with like, 20 seconds left in the shot clock. And, you know, I, 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 I can't help but go back to the program that he came from and just not understanding, um, you know, the position of the game. What is your role in this game, in this moment? You know, you are, you're not the one that we need to take that shot, man. You just you're not right. We needed an RJ getting to the bucket. We need to feed it down to Armando Baycott, right? Uh, Harrison Ingram backing somebody down to the paint. One of the the contributors, the the normal contributors, is somebody who needs the ball in their hand in this spot. Unless you're obviously facing a, a shot clock violation, right? Well, you weren't, and to hoist up a three in that situation. Uh, was just that's not understanding the situation. I mean, that's the, that that's my personal opinion. That's my feeling on the issue. And then to come down on the other end and kind of get under the offensive player and allow you know him to go up and get an and one. You know, if you're gonna foul, man, foul. Don't don't just like kind of get up under him and then let him shoot the ball. You know, so you hoist up a three on one end. And then you give up an and one on the other, dude. That was just a really, really bad 20 seconds. And um, it, it, it possibly could have been the nail in the coffin, which I think it probably was the nail in the coffin for the heels, man. Just really untimely, not, not necessarily turnovers, right? But it might as well have been a turnover because it's not the shot that you want. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> I know that you're trying to make a play, man, but it ended up costing uh, Carolina in the end because that's not who he wanted to take that shot. And so it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Hopefully you learn and you grow from it. And, uh, you know, that is the difference. Those type of plays right there are the that thin line from going home to playing on Saturday. And that's why March Madness is so great, man. So, you know... <clears throat> What can you do? You know, that's life. That is life, man. Sometimes you're in the moment, dude, and sometimes you make mistakes that cost you. And all you can do 
is uh, keep your chin up and bounce back, man, and and come back harder next year. So a lot of people were were kind of on the Hubert Davis train, you know, uh, questioning his decisions and questioning this and questioning that. I just want to remind Carolina fans that coming into the season, we did not really know what we had. You know, we had that 2022 national championship run where we went to the title game, should have won, ended up losing, right, late in the game. Then you're the number one preseason team in America the next year, and you don't even make the tournament. And then you just have a complete shakeup of your roster, and Hubert Davis is able to piece this thing together and formulate it into a team that had the 2024 ACC Coach of the Year, that had an All-American who didn't even make the preseason All-ACC team, the All-ACC team, right? Then you had... You know, a, a 2024 ACC regular season championship, you go to the ACC tournament game and lose to a hot NC State team, okay, and nobody likes that, and then you get a Sweet 16 run, dude, where you just came up short. I would say, all in all, I understand, Tar Heel Nation, we play for championships here, I get it, but... You can't say that this wasn't a successful campaign, man. It wasn't a successful campaign. Do I think this is a Final Four team? Yes. Do I think that if we play Alabama 10 times, we beat them 7 or 8 times out of 10? Yes. Um, it just didn't work out for us today, man. It just didn't work out for us today. And um, Carolina finishes the season 29 and 8. And it's sad because, you know, Mondo's gone. You know, we're going to go into some uncharted territory because he's been a focal point of this team for a long time. I mean, it feels like forever. And, um, you know, there are a lot of changes coming, but I believe personally that this program is in good hands. I really do, man. I think we're in good hands. I think Coach Davis is, uh, you know, he's putting Carolina back on the map. And um, I think we should hold our heads high and we should be proud of what, the heels accomplished this year, right? You can be proud of what you've accomplished and simultaneously be disappointed in what you didn't accomplish, right? So there's a there's a balance here. There's a balance here. And we're going to be winning a lot of games in the future, man. So we'll go into the offseason. We'll kind of repatch everything together. You know, it's a crazy time where, um, you know, the transfer portal, just like what we saw this year, you know, we can restock who doesn't want to stink and play at Carolina? And who wouldn't want to play for Coach Hubert Davis? You know, I'm sure that everything is going to be okay. So, once again, Carolina falls to Alabama in the Sweet 16 out in L.A. 89-87 to to end their 2023-2024 campaign in the Sweet 16. And um, all I can say right now is, hey, I am the biggest Marquette and Houston fan in the country, right? So go to hell, Duke. Go to hell, State. Go Heels. Love you, Tar Heel Nation. And I'll catch you on the next one, baby.